Hello, welcome to the Kanto region. This is the Route to Victory Road, a podcast that chronicles our journey through the main series titles of the Pokemon franchise. I'm your host, Pokemon Professor Mackenzie, and I'm joined today, as always, by my wonderful partner and co-host, Jaylee. Hey, Mackenzie. You sound like you had a lot of sugar today. Welcome back to the podcast, Poke fans and Pokemaniacs. Today, we're going to throw it right in your face. This is going to be high octane. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not on that level. <laughs> maybe maybe you just stay up there and you could keep it up there for both of us this week because I'm not there. I have no rule break this week. So I'm going to go straight into you. how was your week? Oh. I don't think I have a rule break either. I don't know. I break rules all the time. <laughs> I think... Uh, I didn't do too much to have a rule break. No. No? I followed the rules. Week was fine. Week was boring. I have no good news, no bad news, no news at all. I think... I don't know. I need to find some news. Next week, I'm going to have some amazing news. When yeah? We record. I don't know. I'm okay. Gonna, I'll make it up if I have to. That's but the... I have no That's news. the goal. That's the goal. I need to do something incredible so I can talk about it. We have a little bit of news. Do you? Yeah. We both do. Huh? We tried that McFlurry. <laughs> oh, we tried the Squishmallows McFlurry. Is that news? Yeah, sure. Why not? Sure, why not? It we was tried it. Overly sweet and it's covered new. in Pop Rocks. You also have a Squishmallow. I have a new Squishmallow, yeah. It's I right am there. one of those basic bees who loves Squishmallows and teddy bears. His name is Marius. Marius? 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 I don't know. He's a walrus. He's cute. He is cute. I like him. He's purple. <laughs> so was our milkshake. Yeah. Milkshake? You know what I mean. McFlurry. <laughs> it's essentially our a milkshake. ice cream treat. It, it was blueberry flavored and it had Pop Rocks gum in it. Yeah, it was strange. It was very strange. But that, yeah, essentially that's our only... That's the Our news. Early news. Wow. Yeah. We're so. Zelda just started school. Yeah, we started puppy school. And she's doing really well. She she's okay. Yeah. She can learn some things. She's she very got smart. All dog. Educated. She's super smart. So we're proud of her. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's our exciting life. Yeah. But in Pokemon. In Pokemon, it's much more exciting. <laughs> Uh, Pokemon, we start in Fuchsia City. We just beat Koga, the Poison Master, and you stepped outside the gym to go level up a little bit afterward. Of course they did. And then, did you go anywhere else, or did you go straight to Saffron after that? I think I went straight to Saffron. I don't know. All the towns and cities are starting to confuse me and look the same. Yeah. Yeah. I, I took a pit stop at the power plant. You to, went to the power plant. I went to the power plant and I caught two new mon. <gasps> One is Anastasia. She is a content marketing manager. Okay. Need that. For Vermilion mind. City. She is a Pikachu. Oh. And the other Pokemon I caught out there because I I couldn't catch a Magnemite. Which is too bad, because Magnemite's cool. I would have liked to have tried a Magnemite, but that's yeah. fine. Uh, but I caught the Zapdos. Because, Did you? Yeah, because I've, it's a legendary, so I didn't. I have a question now. Yeah. Was this in the same route? Yes, so I'm not going so to be that using... So a rule break? No. No, you're allowed to catch as many Pokemon as you want. You just don't use them. Why doesn't this stick in my head? I ask you the same thing every week. It's okay. So wait, you can't use Zapdos? I'm not going to be using Zapdos, but his name is Zippy Bird. Of course it is. That's perfect. <laughs> I'm so heartbroken that you have a Pikachu and a Zapdos. Yeah? Yeah, because I can't use electric awesome Pokemon. So I'm forever heartbroken. Next generation, you. I will live vicariously again. through you and your Pikachu. <laughs> I also didn't mention this last week, but Madison, my Starmie, is a business owner. Okay, what's her business? Uh, she sells. She see. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Tongue I think myself. I know where you're going with this. She sells seashells by the seashore. Oh, 
Oh, what a good business. <laughs> Did you just make that up on the spot? Yes. <laughs> you caught me so Perfection. off guard. Perfection. <laughs> She just does business. In Holland, my Polly Rath is an insurance marketer. Jesus Christ. Yeah. (laughs) Charity, my executor, was a child therapist. Oh, no. 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 It cannot be. Executor is the creepiest thing I've ever seen. It can't be work with children. Well, it doesn't matter because it's not working for me anymore. (laughs) After I spent so much time on it. Uh, and then <laughs> Christina, my uh, Dratini, is a content creator. I think you mentioned that. Oh, did I? Okay. I remember that. Okay. Dratini's a little streamer. Get it? Because she got caught in a stream. Cute. Yeah. I, I always like try and like think about... It's less the name that I'm trying to match to the Pokemon and more the the profession I'm trying to match to the <laughs> it's Pokemon. cute. I like the Starmie selling... Seashells. That was really good off the top of your head. Improv. <laughs> Except I messed it up. I tongue twisted well, like myself. You You're supposed to. Yeah, that's, that's true. The point. That's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> my only notes left in here are, are the gym. So I guess I didn't make any notes for Silphco. So I'll try my best to remember. I'm gonna pull up the. Uh, walk through and I didn't, we'll talk yeah, about it. Yeah, I didn't make any notes about self coat either, although it was easier and faster than the first time. Yeah. Yeah, I liked yeah. it. And the swirly swoos that you step on and get transported, Yeah, they're faster. Mm-hmm. They seem a little bit faster. The ones that like spin you on the ground, they're faster. Good improvement. Yeah. Yeah, got a bunch these, these, of items, this is the one fought a bunch the, of guys. The teleporters. Yeah. Yeah. The thing on the... What's the thing on the floor? I thought that was... Yeah, you, you teleport. The, the one that you're talking about, the one that you, it pushes you along the floor, that, that's in the, the um, casino. The game center. This is the one where you just teleport to a different part of the building. Too many floor transportation things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Rocket, Rocket just is too obsessed with these weird gimmicks in their buildings. What, what is the, what is the business application of these teleporters, or the floor puzzle in the game corner for that matter? What do you mean? Like, they're supposed to be a criminal syndicate. Well. Okay, actually, you know what? Forget the criminal syndicate. This is the Silphco building. Mm-hmm. This isn't even Team Rocket's hideout. Mm-hmm. Team Rocket's hideout was in uh, in Celadon in the game corner where they had like the weird like pushy tiles that, that scooted you along the ground, which that was already kind of weird. What's the application for that for a thief, right? Like, What do the thieves need it for? They're basically conveyor belts, but... They don't convey things. They just kind of dump them out onto the floor. They're just playing tricks. Playing pranks and goofs. It's yeah, Okay. They carry them around. Sure. They weren't originally in Silphco. You're saying that they're uh, like purposeful traps. Yeah. Team Rocket brought them into Silphco. They just carried them in and put them on the, the floor. The teleporters are also traps? Yeah. Oh, I thought I thought maybe Silphco had like nah. put these in. Nah. Silphco's cool. It's like Devin. Yeah. But Team Rocket, they like to mess with you. They're pranky goofs. I was just wondering if maybe Silphco installed them so that they could get from one office to the next. Like, say that the software engineer on on floor eight needs to talk to the uh, application director on the third floor, and that's why the two are connected or whatever. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe. But, uh, yeah, you're right. It could be that Rocket is just... <laughs> Playing goofs, is that what you said? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because those guys who work at Silphco, their they're cardio's on point. They like the stairs. Oh, I see. Right. They're all super buff nerds. Yep. Nice. So we walk in, and the first thing that we encounter is the first floor, which is a big atrium with a nice fountain. And that's it. That's it. There's yep. no items here. There's no people here. It's just a nice atrium, but it's much better looking than it was in the first game. What did you think of the atrium? Just nice. I didn't notice a difference. 
Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. And I just know I gotta go upstairs here. Fair enough, yep. That's it. Uh, then you get upstairs and you fight just all grunts and scientists. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's all there are. Nerds. Just tons, tons. Uh, and uh, very, very little in the way of diversity up here. Just Zubats, Ratatas, Raticates, Golbats, Weezings, Coughings, Grimers, Mucks, uh, some Cubones, which I will give them that. And then, of course, the scientists have things like Magnemite and Voltorb. Yes. And very Magnetime. Pokemon. Yeah. Electro, Hypno, let's see. Anything surprising? I don't think so. But the whole thing, the whole crux of the matter is that we're trying to get to the floor that has the card key. Key card? I, I would think so, but no, it says card key in, in our inventory. Uh, yeah, it is a I card key. I did not key. notice that. What? And, uh, yeah, I know, right? It would be, you would think, I've key card. I've read this on my screen so many times. Yeah, no. It's I read a, it as key card. Yeah. Oh, no. But it's the card key. And uh, so once you get the card key, the entire <laughs> puzzle unravels, though, because you can open every door. Yes. And then you just go to the ninth floor and you get healed on the bed. Mm-hmm. And that's that's it. You're, like, you're, you're done. You're, you're going to you're going to solve the puzzle you're by brute force at this point. <laughs> Do you think these games need more beds, just like in the middle of a forest or somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Screw yeah. the Pokemon centers. I want to just sleep under the stars with my Pokemon. Okay. Yeah. You're going to probably like black and white. Nice. They, they add, uh, I can't remember what they're called. Uh, la, 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 la. Spoilers. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Did we pick up anything useful? Focus Punch. Torment. These are are moves, by the way. TMs. (laughs) So Focus Punch, Torment. um, Nothing else, really. There were other things like uh, the vitamins and things like that. There's lots in here. Uh... Yeah, okay. Uh, no, I'm just going to jump right ahead to when we encounter our rival. Remember? In the place? Yeah. Oh. I really don't remember, so it must have been really easy. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh it was fairly short. You you go up on a teleporter and he's waiting for you there. Oh. Frederick he Frederick. approaches you and he's all like, hey, I came here to see uh, if I could help out at, at Silphco or whatever. Like, I think he's at, is saying that he could be a uh, an apprentice or whatever for he the people in at Silphco. a job application? Yeah, but, oh. but Team Rocket was there. And so he was... And he was like, oh yeah, I'm 10. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I don't need a job. Uh, so for you... He would have a Pidgeot, level 37, an Alakazam, level 35, a Growlithe, level 38. Yeah, remember? Because you asked me why he hadn't evolved his Growlithe yet. Oh, and I know why I don't remember. It's because his Pokemon were all like 10 levels lower than mine. <laughs> Growlithe, level 38, Execute, level 35, and Blastoise, level 40. The yeah. highest okay. Pokemon of his is a level Easy. 40. I think we overleveled for this game a little bit but i'm not mad about it me neither no it was very simple uh for me it was a all the same except instead of execute it was gyarados and and instead of blastoise it was venusaur Mm -hmm. obviously but like you said very simple i had like fairly much the same uh, lineup that I did last time. My Starmie took care of his Venusaur, for example, and my Raichu took care of his Pidgeot and Gyarados. Nice. I have yeah. the exact same team as I did last week. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> so, yeah. It was it was really easy. Uh, once you beat your Frederick Gravely. or your Chris Harrison, then you can approach the Silphco employee and he'll be like, hey, 
here's a level 25 Pokemon. <laughs> here's a Lapras. Yeah. And it's like, cool that you're giving me a Pokemon, but why is it 25? <laughs> why why aren't you at least matching? Like, it should be, what, 30, 35. Let's say 35, just to average it with, with Blue's Pokemon. No, because the game wants you to go... It wants you to want Lapras. Yeah. So it wants you to spend more time playing the game by leveling up this Lapras. That's fair. However, if you're me and not allowed water types. Or get, ice type. Or ice type. So we get to just cry a little and wave at Lapras in the box. Oh. Or if you're me, then you name Lapras Lori again. Did you call back? <laughs> and add her to your team. Yes. Uh, we continue up Sylphco fighting four more characters and then we get to the last bit of the tower which is some guy i don't know he's just wearing a business suit he looks like a mysterious gym leader he looks like a mysterious eighth gym leader yeah yeah but uh like honestly he just looked like a guy there to, to just do business he's businessy and of course Eighth gym leader has Nidorino and Rhyhorn, Kangaskhan, and Nidoqueen. Some big tanky Pokemon. Mm hmm. Like bodyguards. For Yay. His business. For business. His business bodyguards. Business bodyguards. Starmie needs some business bodyguards. Starmie? Yeah. <laughs> for his uh, seashell business. Yeah. So the strongest Pokemon on this team is Kangaskhan by mile, in my opinion. Kangaskhan is just tough. Yeah? Yeah. Nidoqueen would have been tough, but I mean, Psychic is kind of hard to withstand. I imagine you had no problem. No, I like one-shotted all of his Pokemon. Yeah, you yeah. have uh, <laughs> an Alakazam. Alakazam is pretty dang good. Once you beat the Mysterious 8th Gym Leader... The guy who owns the Sylph Company will give you the Master Ball. Devin Sylph. Devin, Devin Sylph? That's his name? That's his name, of course. <laughs> He's like, I, I, I hate my uh, my cousin, Devin Stone. Yeah. Right. right. And that's why you know he started gonna the Sylph Company. You know this is going to follow us on for every game. Oh, yeah. All like the big business owners are going to be named Devin They're going to be Devin something? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And then, uh, yeah, we get the Master Ball, and we head back down to Saffron City. So we can take on the Fighting Dojo. <laughs> That's what I did. I did it, too. Yeah? Yeah. Amazing. Again, just wiped out everybody lickety splittedly. Yeah, I think the high yeah, the highest level Pokemon that they have is 37, and that is Koichi. And he's got a Hitmon Lee and a Hitmon Chan. Ooh. We've got a name. Is it the same name? Because remember in uh Generation 2, you face him again. So the black belt that said that he was the karate master from Red and Blue, or Karate Master from Kanto. In Gold and Silver, his name was Black Belt Kyo. So he's not Koichi. Oh. In fact, none of these guys are named Kyo. We have Black Belt Hideki, Black Belt Hitoshi, Mike, Aaron, and Koichi. <laughs> Weird. None of them are Kyo. None of them so are So I Kyo. wonder where Kyo came from. That he's the Black Belt Master of Kanto. I guess there is three years difference between the Kanto and Johto games. I'll have to keep note. You know what? I'm going to write it here this week. So, uh, what's his name? Black Belt Master. Black Belt. Koichi. And then when we go back to Johto in those remakes, let's see if he gets his name changed to Koichi instead of Kyo, or if he keeps it Kyo, or if it's something brand new. What remake are you talking about? Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. Oh. Yeah, we're going back to Johto. That's the worst game in the world. 
We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll change your tune when you see the My improvements. My tune is perfect right now. You get milk tank again. Yeah, I get a milk tank. <laughs> the rest of the game is so boring. Anyway, we're not there. We're, we're past that. We've grown. We've grown. I've grown so much. Okay, I've made the note. Yay. Black Belt Koichi is the leader here. Koichi. So we got uh, either Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan. I picked Hitmonlee. Boom, boom, boom. And I listened to this time and I picked the opposite. Hitmonchan. Mm -hmm. That's their, their sounds. Hitmonchan's like, when you send them out, and Hitmonlee is like, boom, boom. That's so funny that you know that. <laughs> uh, Did you name yours? Nope. Me neither. I can't use fighting types. I just boxed it. Yeah. Because I was really stuck to my team. I didn't want to switch anybody out. The good thing about Hitmonchan is he learned Sky Uppercut. Oh, that sounds dangerous. Yeah. It's really good. It's a it's a good move in this generation. He also learns Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, Fire Punch, just like he did in the first game. But just like in the first game, his special attack... Oh, it sucks. <laughs> so he can't really use it. Not worth it. Nope. Uh, Hitmonlee, of course, learns High Jump Kick, which is his signature move. And he also learns um, the Mega Kick, I think. I can't remember. But it's not important. I'm not going to use him because I can't use Fighting. Okay. Yeah. And you're not going to use him because you don't he, need him. He's ugly. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It, it's kind of weird that he's wearing clothes, isn't it? It's strange how different they look. Yeah. Even though they're supposed to be just, like, the same but opposite. Yeah. But they just look completely different. Like, the kicking one is a blob with legs. And yeah. then the punchy punch one has, like, clothes and looks more humanoid-ish. Yeah, yeah. And they both come from the same Pokemon, Tyrogue, apparently. It's so strange. Tyrogue looks like Hitmonchan. I will, I'll what give the him heck that. is Hitmonlee? It's just like an abomination. I don't know. I've always thought he was weird because he's like he's like he's basically like, like a diglet with legs. Ew. And and like those weird black eyes. It, it's strange. It is very strange. I don't understand. Where did that come from? Uh, yeah. Strange. Search me. Uh, we go to the Saffron City gym. We do. Yeah. I hate this gym. There's a lot of lot of trainers here. A lot of trainers here. And I did my best to fight them all. I think I got them, but I Wait, might we, have missed one. Are we going to talk about the gym now? Yeah. Dang. Okay. Do you want to take a quick break and then we'll come back with our Pokemon Center check-in? Sure. Okay. Yes. Yes, I do. See you guys soon. Welcome back from our break. Pokemon Master Jaylee, Sylveon Trainer Jaylee, Evolution Gym Leader Jaylee. Don't do it. Just don't forever. do it. Let's just let's just keep going. Well, go welcome forever. back and hope you had a good break. Yes. Thank you for coming back, Poke fans and Pokemaniacs. We're gonna talk about our teams now before we talk about the gym. And I'm gonna go first. This week's contestants were Madison, Starmy, level 42. Jonavie came back out. Nido Queen, level 42. Ooh. And actually, something funny about this is this was the first and I think only gym where Nido Queen was put away in my first playthrough. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's funny that I'm bringing her back out. That is funny. I also trained her up to, so that she'd be 42. Uh, Lori Lapras, <laughs> level 42. Nice. <laughs> it took a while to get her up there, but she's yeah, up there now. Uh, John Henry, finally not the weakest on my team, level 43. Blastoise. Good job. Evie, my Vaporeon, level 43. And Anastasia, my Raichu, level 42. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Good job. I thought that uh, that was a nice little team. That's a good little team, Z. Yeah. I like it. Me too. Don't be mad at me. Okay. Phoebe, my Pidget, level 45. Okay. 
Abraham, my Alakazam, level 45. Mm-hmm. Grace, my Gengar, level... 45. 45. Nice. Snoop, my Snorlax, level 46. Oh. Chucky, my Charizard, level 46. And Diana, my Dragonair, level 47. 47? Mm-hmm. 47. Mm-hmm. Three more levels. I know. 55. Oh, This whoa. is why she's so high is because I want a Dragonite. I want to be able to use one for a while. I know I'm overleveled. I know. 55? I know. Why so high? I thought it was 46. That's why I was like Googling. I was like, oh my God, it's so close. No. 55. I knew it was, I knew it was 50 plus, but 55 is so wild. Stupid. And I don't yeah. know. I think that's like one of the highest Pokemon or highest levels for a Pokemon to evolve. And I never had the patience to do this, so I know I'm over level, but it's making the game so much more fun for me. Yeah. Because I'm not struggling as much as I was. <laughs> I know it sucks. I know. I'm sorry, but this is how I'm playing. That's fine. I'm not. I want a Dragonite. You're you're totally fine to be. <laughs> I'm out leveled. Out leveling the gyms. That's totally fine. Some people. The way that they find the game fun is they take their starter, and their starter's like level 70 at this point. Yeah. <laughs> they I'm just on my way. Train, like, they only use their starter the whole game, and they give it all the rare candies they can find and <laughs> everything. I honestly think that's how I played when I was a child, when I first yeah. played the first game, and that's all I did was, like, I had one or two Pokemon, yeah. and I didn't care about a whole team, and I just, like... Leveled them up like crazy. You would be surprised how many people play like that. It, it's, I, or at least have played like that. Yeah. It, it's it's a very large number. And I honestly don't think I ever beat the game. Really? Yeah, I don't remember ever beating it. Hmm. I just remember playing and, yay, Pokemon. And that was the capacity I had as a child. I understand. My, my Pokemon are beasts. Yeah, they're pretty strong. And they would have no problem against this gym, which consists entirely of psychic and ghosts, mm-hmm. for some reason. Just a bunch of psychic boys, psychic little boys, Cameron, Tyron, Preston, and Johan. Yeah. Like, okay. And they were like, they were the same as the psychics in the last game, in Generation 3, in mm-hmm. Hoenn. Because they were like saying things like "You're going to regret." Uh, I have a I have a psychic premonition that you're going to regret this. See, now I feel bad that I lost. Now you feel bad that I feel bad, or whatever. And it's like, I don't though. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you're arrogant, and I sh- put you in your place. You're not a mind reader, sir. <laughs> uh, the hardest Pokemon in here uh, would have been Slowbro, level thirty-eight. That that's it. That uh, that was the hardest Pokemon that the mobs had. The mobs meaning the the not the gym leader. Is that what they're called? Yeah, uh, in 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 yeah. your terms. In in yeah, some okay. some people call okay. them mobs. Uh, mobs are like. So when you're fighting a boss in like an RPG, especially a multi massive multiplayer online RPG. Mm-hmm. Uh, when the big bad summons little things to distract you, those little things are called mobs. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the and, lesson. And if you can beat them up really easy, like these guys here, they're known as trash mobs. <laughs> oh, this whole gym was a trash mob. I one-shot every single person. Yeah. Every single Pokemon. Because then, I have really high-level Pokemon, but mm, it's their fault. They just suck. And then Sabrina comes out with her Kadabra, 38, Mr. Mime, 37, Venomoth, 38, Alakazam, 43. All of them got one shot. Same. Yeah. They couldn't touch me. No. Nope. It was very simple. Sorry, Sabrina. It's much more fun, though. Like, I get confidence when I win. But something that I found really funny. What? I beat Alakazam with Raichu. Using Thunderbolt. Really? And the first thing that Sabrina says is, this loss shocked me. Oh! And I was like... That's cute. I have to write that down. That's cute. I like that a lot. That's adorable. Um, I also hated this gym. You did? Yeah. It's the same gym in the first generation where I got lost. Yeah. The first time I did it, I think I got lost for like 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. 
This time I got lost a lot. I helped you a little. You helped me, yeah. I'd still be in there. <laughs> to this day. I think I said that last time, too. But, hey, <laughs> who's remembering anything? Not me! I This this gym helped me realize a lot of my Pokemon have dark moves. Oh, really? Yeah. My Blastoise, my Vaporeon, and my Nidoqueen all have bite. And, Such uh, a good move. Yeah. My, um... My Dodrio and my Farfetch'd have, uh, Farfetch'd has knockoff and Dodrio has pursuit. I've never heard of knockoff. It's, uh, it just hits an opponent's held item off so they can't use it anymore. Oh, cool. So, like, if you come across somebody using leftovers, you can knock off and it'll hit their leftovers off their Pokemon so they can't use it anymore. Dang, that's so smart. I yeah. like that. It's like your trick. Yeah. Okay. Except trick, you have to have an item so that you can swap, swap it, it with an opponent's item. Okay. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. So that was fun. Uh, and the reason why I brought that up is because I was using Vaporeon and I used Bite on uh, Mr. Mime. And then Mr. Mime encored me. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. okay. I was going to do it again anyway. I think I used Surf on him. Yeah. Yeah. And he encored you? Yeah. Yeah. And then he was dead. That's so. pretty funny. Uh, you haven't evolved your Eevee yet, have you? No. Eevee's boxed. Yeah? Yeah. You're probably not going to use Flareon. I don't think so. That's fair. I'm liking my team, and they're so high. Yeah. And Charizard's then, way stronger anyway. Yeah. I already have a fiery one. Yeah. I love Eevee, though, and I feel bad that she's just sitting in a box, but... She can't, cannot compare to my level 46 Charizard right now. Sad, sad times. Yeah. I do want to do an update on my matchmaking, though. Oh, okay, yeah. Just a summary. Not really an update, but I wanted to go back and say that some of my Pokemon have found a match. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You finally made matches. I did make some matches because I'm never going to use one of the pairs. They're going to stay in the box. Oh, they're going off to go enjoy matrimony? Yeah, they're just, they're, yeah, they're happy. And then the other ones are on my team, but they do really well together, so I'm going to match them up, and we're going to move on. Okay. So, starting with my Geodude, Greg the Fist, and my Oddish, Odessa, I forgot what the heck she was. They were sitting at a 77% compatibility, and they're hitting it off, so they're in the box having some fun together. <laughs> I'm never going to say that again. That was strange. Your Graveler and your Gloom? Isn't that what they turned out being? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're growing old together. Yeah. That's nice. Um, my Alakazam and my Pidgeot are at 82% compatibility. They work really well together, so we're going to call them a match. Close my matchmaking book on them. And my Snorlax and Dragonair are perfect for each other and a 98% compatibility. They're in love. Like, I've never seen love like that before. <laughs> so they're gonna stay a match. Nice. And my Charizard, still looking. Snoop and Diana. Snoop and Diana. Charizard's still hunting. Yeah. So I'm gonna focus on him a little more going forward. Nice. Yep. So I think with my pairs, I'm gonna try to pair them together when I'm battling. We'll see. <laughs> I don't really have a plan yet, but I like the team that I have and I wanna keep. The ones that are paired up on my team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Sabrina, after you beat her, she says, everyone has psi power. You just don't realize it. And I was like, oh, that's kind of like what they said, what that other trainer said in in uh, Hoenn. Remember? I think uh, her name was Jackie. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> too many of them. We, Sounds like some mentalist bull crap to me. Yeah, that's that's what we we made that joke, Patrick Jackie. Oh. Yeah, uh, Psychic Jackie on Route One Twenty Three said, "We all have psychic powers. You just can't remember how to use them." Yep, bunch of baloney. <laughs> Once we beat Sabrina, she gives us the Marsh Badge, which is a little gold. 
badge and she gives that gives us the ability to raise Pokemon up to level 70 before they stop listening to us. Oh, which, I'll be there soon. <laughs> will you? And she also gives us the TM for Calm Mind, which is strong, but I don't have a Gardevoir this generation, so I don't need it. What does it do? It increases a Pokemon's special defense and special attack mm. each one stage. But I don't need it, because, I mean, like, it, it would be good on Blastoise, maybe, but... I think it'd be good on my Alakazam, but I like where my Alakazam's sitting right now, so I'm not yeah. gonna bother him. Yeah. I used it on my Gardevoir last generation, but that... Or, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's not even last generation, I, I can't say it. Uh, I used it I used it on my Gardevoir in the last games, in Ruby and Sapphire, but... That's because I also had like Thunderbolt and and uh, Thief on on Gardevoir, so I needed it to have high special attack because uh, it was it only had the one stab move, uh, same type attack bonus, oh. which was psych psychic, right? So it had psychic, it had Thunderbolt, and it had Thief, and then it had Calm Mind. So I would Calm Mind, Calm Mind, Calm Mind, and then I would Thief if I needed to hit a Psychic type, or Thunderbolt if it was a Flying or Water type, or Psychic if it was a Poison, or any other kind of type. You lost me. But I'm pretty sure people who know what you're talking about that are listening <laughs> can keep up. But I'm deer in the headlights. Sorry. That's fair. My time at the end of Sabrina... It was 54.45. I thought that was cool. Nice. 54.45. Yeah. 54.45. My Pokedex numbers are 66 Pokemon caught and 118 seen. Oh man, you're so much better than me. I'm 44 caught, 114 seen. 44 is pretty good. That means that you... okay, but... That means that you caught at least three, right? I think. <laughs> I I only caught six this this stretch, and I caught... I can't even think of what all six are. Pikachu, Pikachu, Raichu, so that counts as two because I evolved it. Pikachu, Raichu, Zapdos, Hitmon Lee, Lapras. Lapras, that's five. Did I evolve someone else? I don't know. Weird. I must have evolved someone else and just forget. Mm hmm. Anyway, so. 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 so, that is that for that, but now, time for the bear summer. Time for the bear summer, mom. I was trying to sound like a, what do you call this, a PA system. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the bear, no, I, I doubt the mic's even going to pick that up, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Madison, you've been... John's guiding star, this whole John Henry is my last mm -hmm. voice. You've been John's guiding star this whole stretch. You've been the light in the dark, and you will be given a Roselli berry. So you stay on Yay. with the rest of the crew <laughs> and uh, continue on into the next round. Genevieve, you've been an old standby. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just imagine saying that to somebody you're trying to date? <laughs> oh, you've been an old standby. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> John's been very happy to have you by his side from the very first week. Literally on the side. Well, second week. Second week. <gasps> on the side. In the box. <laughs> Wow. You can uh you can expect a Roselli berry. <laughs> Evie the Vaporeon. Of course you will be getting a Roselli berry. Can't get rid of Vaporeon. Lori Anastasia. Please step forward. Anastasia, you landed the final attack. On Sabrina's Alakazam this week. 
and you performed so bravely, so admirably in this gym. But I'm sorry, this week you will be receiving the spell in Barry. That's so mean. <laughs> Lori, you are receiving the Custap Barry this week. You've just got Lori. Yeah. I just got Anastasia, too. So ruthless. Yeah. That's the way that John likes it, I guess. I, uh, <laughs> straight up ruthless. That's okay. Yeah. So. Brutal. Brutal. What a devastating episode. Anastasia. Please leave the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Go home. The rest of you will be moving on which, into the next round. <laughs> which Pokemon was Anastasia? Right, you. You just got a Raichu. I just got Raichu. You're getting rid of her Raichu? Yeah. I'm so mad at you. <laughs> Raichu's not going to be any good against the fire types. But all my water so types cute. are. Okay. And now it's cute, but okay, all okay, my water fine. types are going to be useful. I'm invested. I have to I have to let someone go next week. And it's going to be all my water types. <laughs> That'll be hard for you. It will be hard for me. And that is my berry ceremony. Thank you, everybody. We're going to take another quick break and come back with Pokemon Academy. Oh, I never even... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back from our break, Jaylee. Welcome back from our break, Pokefans and Pokemon Master Jaylee. <laughs> <laughs> and Pokemaniacs. Well, welcome back. Who's that Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at my boy. Yes, That's we are. my boy, Alakazam. Alakazam. Oh. My boy. Alakazam. Also known as Fudin. Oh, yeah. Fudin. It's number 65 in the national decks. He is the Psy Pokemon. A psychic type. Alakazam's base stat total of 490 points puts him right on the same level, stats-wise, with the previous Pokemon that we were looking at, Weezing. Wait, he has the same stat as Weezing? Why is he so much better? But Why? easily outperforms it yes. in a competitive sense in every way, and not just due to its type advantage. <laughs> no. Probably because all of Weezing's best stats are defense and HP, where Alakazam's are in his speed and his special attack. Other Pokemon we've encountered with this same stat total are Altaria, the bird dragon that oh, yeah. Winona had. Blossom, eh. Electabuzz, eh. Electrode, eh. Exploud. What? Whismer's fully evolved form. Whismer, Loudred, Exploud. That makes no sense. Kangaskhan. Very cool. Slowbro. Eh. Slow King. Eh. Tauros. Pretty cool. Vile Plume and Victory Bell. Yuck. And of course, the bovine lifeline herself, Miltang. My girl. <laughs> That's my girl. Alakazam is often seen as a counterpart to Machamp, as they both have three-part evolutionary families, both reach their final stage by trading, both level at a similar rate, and both have a 75% male gender ratio. Machamp is also a very powerful physical attack type Pokemon, while Alakazam is powerful in a special attack way. <laughs> He's just special. This may also be the case for Alakazam and Gengar, for most of the same reasons, but unlike fighting type, Alakazam is weak to ghost type attacks. Mm. Alakazam is pretty obviously inspired by illusionists who bend spoons to demonstrate psychic ability. It also appears to be based on either a fox or perhaps a goat in appearance. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does look like a goat. Because he's got the mustache. Guy. Yeah, I like the mustache. I, I, I like Alakazam. I think that it's supposed to be, um, like, uh, I think it's supposed to be a goat because I think it's supposed to be, like, a little satanic, maybe? 
Oh, I like it even more. That's because so it's cool. head. Whoops! Because its head kind of looks like a pentagram. Can you pull it up again? I gotta see this. Yeah. Um, Ali Kazam. Pentagram. Kinda. Right, like this yeah. to here to up to down to up. Strange. Right, kind of pentagram shaped. If you kind of squint at it. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you drink a lot and then take a look at the picture. And then a goat is obviously... A goat. Well, another symbol for Baphomet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so anyway, who knows? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I like that idea. Much like its pre-evolutions, Abra and Kadabra, Alakaz... <laughs> <laughs> Alakazm. Alakazm. Much like its pre-evolutions... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's such a good word. Alakazm. <laughs> I'm going to call him that now. It's not Alakazam anymore. It's Alakazm. Aberson Cadabras. Alakazm. Alakazm. <laughs> Much like its pre evolutions, Abra and Cadabra, Alakazam's name is based on a common flourishing incantation used by stage magicians. While its Japanese name might be a reference to Harry Houdini. Houdin. Okay. Okay. This is supported by the fact that Abra's Japanese name is Casey, in reference to Edgar Casey, and Kadabra is Young Geller, in reference to Yuri Geller. Jeez. Both of whom are accomplished illusionists in their own regard. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, who does Alakazm sound like? <laughs> I can't. Some of Alakazam's Pokedex entries claim that Alakazam has over 5,000 IQ, or that it possesses infinitely multiplying brain cells. But one innocuous entry from the Let's Go games presents a very simple alternative. A Pokemon that can memorize anything! It never forgets what it learns! That's why this Pokemon is smart! I need that brain. This is clearly not true, though. Because it only knows four moves. Yeah, you so can it, make it forget moves. So it always forgets teleport as soon as it can. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we can make it. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's I all I love it. Thanks for the information on Alakazm. It's so funny. That's so cool. I love him. He's a cool Pokemon. He's cool. It's cool. I have some trivia for you. And I didn't... Oh. Sabrina's... Sorry. <laughs> I'm so confused. In Generation 1, at this point, I talked about Nidoqueen. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about Alakazam this time because it's Sabrina's ace. Anyway. It's pretty much my ace. All my Pokemon are aces. Yeah. I can't pick. Anyway, I got some Pokedex trivia for you. Sure. Are you ready? Yep, I'm not looking. You're not looking. Good job. Number one. Mm Mm-hmm. It has no arms, but its tail makes it a strong swimmer. Okay. Uh, Poliwag. Yes! I had two hints to give you, too. Nice. (gasps) Number two. Yeah. They say that this Pokemon will appear before kind-hearted, caring people and shower them with happiness. Sorry, can you say it again? They they say that this Pokemon will appear before kind-hearted, caring people and shower them with happiness. This is a tough one. I don't n- know this Pokemon. Well, I do. Um, Generation 2. So, oh. there. It'll give you a little bit of... Hmm. Deli Bird? No. Okay. Next hint is it is a final form. And it showers people with happiness. Hmm. I never knew this about this Pokemon. I never really talked about this Pokemon before. I can find another entry if you need one more hint. But I will say all the other entries are, like, pretty similar. Okay. It's not special. Oh. <laughs> Ledian? No, one more guess. Okay. It's just the five-star Pokemon, so I thought maybe it was, like, meant to be lucky or happy or whatever. It showers people with happiness. 
They say that it will appear before kind-hearted, caring people and shower them with happiness. I can read another one because it's... Togetic? Yes! Oh, nice. Okay. Good job. Well, yeah, okay. That makes it's sense. Not it's not special. It's the happiness Pokemon. It's just so. a meh. Yeah. I never knew this Pokemon was a thing. I don't like it. Anyway, moving on. Number That's three. It's going to be a very important next generation. Moving on. Moving on. This Pokemon is able to swallow items of its own size whole. As a stomach com... Oh. Oh, gross. Hold on. <laughs> I am so grossed out that I can't even read this. Let's just stop there. This Pokemon is able to swallow items of its own size whole. Okay. I know what it is. Yeah, of course you do. Swalot. No. Oh, Gulpin? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was the hint was it was going to be... the first stage oh okay nice gross nice i couldn't even get through that good job you did it thank you thank you and thanks all of you poke fans for listening this week please please support us by following us on whatever platform you use to listen to your favorite podcast also we need your help please drop a like a comment rate our show and leave a review we would really appreciate the support and you can find some extra RVR content on patreon.com slash route to victory road. Our quote this week comes from Pokemon Black and White, but I can't remember what NPC it comes from. <laughs> Let's call him Larry. The more you fight, the stronger you'll be. The more you dig, the bigger the hole will be. If you have a purpose, there is no wasted effort. The inspiration keeps flowing. Thank you. Yeah. I thought that that was important because we fought a gym. We fought a, a whole business building. We fought a gym. And it's not a wasted effort. And we keep fighting. Because we keep fighting. We keep getting stronger. We keep getting smarter. We keep getting wiser. We keep getting faster. Keep going. That's it. Oh. Keep getting more things to throw on the pile. Mm. The things that we are and can do and can be. We climb this mountain. There we go. We eat this mountain. Oh, I thought you were going to go into some, like, Miley Cyrus lyrics. <laughs> we climb this mountain. We make it move. There we go. Thank you. It's an uphill battle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the rest of the lyrics. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We will see you next week. And we'll see you next time on the route to Victory Road. Thanks for the information on Alakazm.